games into their history are the Bulls ready for a matchup like this? I don't know, boy. This is an awful good program. Uh, this team has won four 1AA national championships. They're on this uh, track this year to win another one. This is a real challenge. The quarterback, of course, for the South Florida Bulls, Chad Barthart, almost beat this team a year ago. He's been nursing a sore shoulder. Let's take a look now at our Southern Ford Dealers quarterback matchup. He takes on Greg Hill, two excellent quarterbacks that get it done in different ways. Well, they certainly do. Comparing these two offenses is like comparing apples and oranges. In this case, uh, in Greg Hill's place, uh, peaches and oranges, but uh, both outstanding quarterbacks. Of course, Greg Hill is a great option quarterback. Char Chad Barnhart is a great thrower. This is really going to be fun to watch these two. And the Bulls' defense will see one of the most powerful running games in all of college football in Georgia Southern, averaging nearly eight yards a carry on first down. Incredible offensive machine that Georgia Southern has, and their personnel fits this uh, offense perfectly. Uh, with Greg Hill at quarterback, Peterson at fullback, and a great offensive line, this is really something they're into today. It's also a fascinating matchup of X's and O's. Two of the top young coaches, you see Paul Johnson here of Georgia Southern, Jim Levitt of South Florida. Well, absolutely, two of the great young coaches in college football, both finalists for the Eddie Robinson Award, the top 1AA coach in the country. Both schools are going to have a hard time keep, keeping these guys here. In many ways, this is like a playoff game for the University of South Florida, and confidence is always a key in that. We talked to Jim Levitt, how he knows when his team is confident. There's an attitude, a swagger in the walk, uh, the way they go about business. You, you can sense it. You just know it. Uh, and being around them, there's an air, a presence about them that, that really uh, distinguishes you know, the, themselves as a very confident group. We're live at Paulson Stadium, the prettiest little stadium in America. That's what it's billed as, and Georgia Southern will receive the kickoff. Ready to kick off for the South Florida Bulls. Bill Gramatica back to receive. Standing at their goal line is number one, Corey Joyner, and number 36, Benny Cunningham. Georgia Southern coming in 10-0. The South Florida Bulls 7-2. Georgia Southern, the number one team of the country, has been number one the last four weeks. And we are underway. Joyner will take it at the one. And the Bulls hem him in. Cliff Dell on the tackle, the senior from Campus King High School for the South Florida Bulls. And Georgia Southern will take things over very close to their 20-yard line, first and 10. Here's a look at the starting lineups for Georgia Southern. A very veteran offensive line. The center, Winslet, one of the top small centers in the country. The backs... Peterson. He is a freshman and one of the top ground caners in the country. Joiner, a setback. And here's a quarterback, Greg Hill. From Sarasota Riverview, the pitch. This is Cunningham. Able to turn the corner. Knocked out of bounds by Anthony Henry, but not before. The Eagles get a first down on their opening play from scrimmage. Well, the key on that play was a great block by the wide receiver. Uh, Titus Johnson against Bernard Brown. Greg Hill, 15 and 1 as a starter. Again, the former star at Sarasota Riverview. He had four touchdowns last week. Ran for 219 yards. Again, that is a quarterback. Also passed for 143 yards and a touchdown. First down for Georgia Southern at the 34. Again, the pitch. Turning the corner this time, that's Sherrard Freeman. And he gets another first down. This is nothing new for this Georgia Southern team. Georgia Southern averaging some eight yards per carry on first down. The starting defensive lineups for the South Florida Bulls. And believe me, the Bulls will be tested defensively. Hey, Edwards, Basiglio, and Blunt. Linebackers, William Smith and Mark. And your defensive back. Davis, Manns, and Henry. Another first down for Georgia Southern. Hill to the air for the first time. Plenty of time. He's got Joyner. And they're calling it incomplete. Joyner was wide open at the 35-yard line, not able to hold on. 
Well, Al, it, you know, the 90% of the offense for Georgia Southern this year has come from the quarterback and the fullback, Peterson. And uh, Coach Levitt and Rick Kravitz, the defensive coordinator, uh, they have they said, we're going to take away the fullback and the quarterback but and just depend on their speed to run to the pitch. So far, they have not been able to get to the pitch on those two first downs. Georgia Southern, the number one rushing offense in the country, averaging 383 yards per game on the ground. Second down. Hill nearly goes down. He's able to pitch it out. That was Cunningham again on the carry. He's over the 50-yard line near the 45 of the South Florida Bulls. And every play so far, every option play up to this point has been the pitch, and that's exactly what South Florida wanted to do. Uh, obviously, they got to make better plays on the pitch, and the corners have got to get off the blocks by the wide receivers. These wide receivers, they don't get paid to catch passes. They block and block well. It's a gain of six yards. Third down, the first third down today for this Eagle offense. Here's an audible. 80% at the line. Another pitch. Freeman has some room, and he gets away inside the 20. Another first down for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Well, you know, the Georgia Southern offense is really an amazing one to watch. And if you look at the replay here, you'll see that the slot back got the block on Roy Mann's number 11. You see the chop blocks, and right there you see Mann's getting off the chop block, and he can't quite uh, get to the pitch, and he has the pitch. Uh, Georgia Southern keeps track. Last week against Furman, they had 122 knockdowns on offense. I mean, they, they chop you, chop you, chop you. That is an incredible number. They say that Freeman was out at the 21. First and 10 from there, just underway. And for the first time today, the fullback, Adrian Peterson on the carry. He came into the game, one of the top rushers in the country, more than 1,800 yards, 23 touchdowns on the season. Again, he's only a freshman. Yeah, I mean, he's had an incredible year, and if he gets uh, 63 yards a day, he passes Ron Dame for the, uh, from Wisconsin for the all-time freshman rushing record in college football. Those numbers are gaudy for anybody, averaging nearly eight yards a pop, although he lost a yard on that play. Hill to the air again. He's got Joyner. Inside the five-yard line at the four. Well, they've done a good job of taking away the wide receivers on the play-action pass, but boy, that's tough duty for Demetrius Woods, and you'll see him here, number 45, chasing the slot back right there, and that's a tough job for the linebacker to be able to do that. And the more they see this offense, the better they, you cannot simulate this offense in practice. You just can't do it. It's learning on the run here. What a great offense. This is unbelievable. First and goal from the three. And the South Florida Bulls call a timeout. 12.32. Left to go in the opening period. The Bulls call the timeout. We're scoreless in Statesboro. With Georgia Southern on the move. The South Florida Bulls had called the timeout. First and goal from the three. Georgia Southern, 10-0 on the season. The number one rushing offense in Division I AA. They're knocking at the door. They have outscored their opponents 128-44 to in the opening period. They're on their march in their opening drive. Peterson, close to the one. And the freshman from Alachua, not able to sneak his way into the end zone for a 24th touchdown on the season. You know, and Al, that, this opening drive so far, uh, the game plan of South Florida is evident. They're, you know, we knew that. They're going to do everything to take away the fullback and the quarterback. And right off the bat, you see them throw play-action passes. That's to keep the corner out of the mix, too. They're going to make sure that corner knows he has to defend the pass. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Hill with flags down, pulled down by Anthony Henry behind the line of scrimmage. But again, there's a flag on the play. Uh, this offense has scored 95% in the red zone this year. So you don't very often stop this team once they get inside the 20. Offside South Florida. Well, that hurts. Instead of a loss on the play, now it is half the distance to the goal. 
Jim Levitt says you got to be smart, guys. And you see, when they get down here in the goal line, they put Peterson back to a true tailback position. And, of course, he's so strong and explosive that he, he just fits that uh, perfectly. He's 5'10", 270, uh, excuse me, 207 pounds, built like a rock. His brother is an outstanding linebacker at Florida, Mark Peterson, number 29. Second down again, this time from the one. Peterson fighting his way. No signal yet. I thought he was in from this angle, but uh, the officials have ruled him down, I think, at the right about at the four-inch line. The crowd wanted a touchdown, but that's about as close to the goal line as you can get for third down. This offense, you know, we're going to be giving you stats all day long, but, I mean, you'll get tired of them. But this offense is really something, and I've seen this coach do it before. He, uh, he really, he, he's really the originator of this offense. Third and goal from six inches. Peterson again, and this time he gets in for the touchdown. We got a flag on the play. It's very possible that South Florida may be lining up offsides, which is really pretty common. Uh, down here in the goal line, especially if, if the offensive line is back a little bit, and I think that's exactly what's happened. You're exactly right, Doug Graber. So the touchdown stands. Officially, it's a one-yard run for Peterson. In reality, it was about a four-inch run. And Georgia Southern with the lead over Jim Levitt and the South Florida Bulls into a 10th point after Chris Chambers. He's 53 of 56 on the season. How about 56 touchdowns already on the season yeah, for Georgia it's, it's Southern? Just absolutely amazing. And Chambers is right down Broadway. And Georgia Southern runs its lead to 7 0 on its opening drive of this contest. 10.59 left to go in the opening period. The number one team in the country off and rolling 7-0 over the Bulls. Bruce, I got it. The sun trying to make its way through the clouds here in Statesboro, Georgia. Temperature right around 70 degrees, literally no breeze. And right now the sun is shining down upon the number one team in the country, the Eagles from Georgia Southern. The Eagles taking it some 80 yards for a touchdown on their opening drive, and they lead the South Florida Bulls by a score of 7 to nothing. Ready to kick off now for the Eagles. The kicker, Chris Chambers, back to receive for the Bulls. Charlie Jackson and Jermaine Clemens. Very high kick. Five yards deep, Jackson will pull it out. And he's got some blocking. Jackson over the 30 to the 37 yard line. A flag is down. That might be a face mask against Georgia Southern. So the Bulls may have excellent field position on their opening drive. But there's another flag down at the 10. There may be a hold or a clip back there. Yeah, I think we're gonna have offsetting penalties. And, uh, boy, Charlie Jackson broke uh, right in the clear, and you can see the speed of Georgia Southern. Believe me, they have speed as well. Uh, the corner, number two, Kawaki Thomas, just absolutely ran Charlie Jackson down. Jim Levitt, extremely unhappy. Well, he's had three calls uh, early in the game go uh, against him already. Now this, they're going to mark it off from the spot of the foul, which is about the 11-yard line. But let's, what's the other flag for? Have a hold against the South Florida Bulls. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That must have been an a, in, inadvertent flag on the sideline. I don't understand that. Oh, boy, this is tough field position. Now, the good news for South Florida is uh, Georgia Southern, uh, their offense is spectacular. Their defense, they've had some problems this year, so they're just going to have to outscore them. I mean, that's, I'm sorry. That's the way this game is going to have to be. And the main thing right now for the Bulls, patience on this opening drive and composure from the six-yard line, first and ten. Bulls trail 7-0. Raphael Williams able to keep the legs going. 
to the nine-yard line on first down. Chad Barnhart nursing a sore shoulder. He is not 100%, so the offensive line all that more important to protect their senior quarterback. In the backfield, Raphael Williams, Dixon has had a fine year at fullback Anderson Dell and Hippolyte, the receivers. Barnhart, 16 touchdown passes so far, did not play last week against Cumberland because of the shoulder injury. Glenn Gantz with the work last week. That's R.J. Anderson in motion. The draw play. And Georgia Southern is ready. The senior, Eric Davis, on the tackle for Georgia Southern along with Vonsellis Allen. And those are their two top defensive linemen, and both of those guys are NFL prospects. And uh, the scouts have been in here, and they're both big, strong guys that can run. The defensive starters for Georgia Southern, Wilson, Allen, Davis, really the key man up front defensively for Georgia Southern. Smithers, the second leading tackler on this team at linebacker. And the leading tackler is Arky Thompson, the free safety. He also has six interceptions. Third down and long for the South Florida Bulls. Charlie Jackson in motion. Barnhart with his first pass. Little swing pass. Jermaine Clemens. Look at Clemens go. Very close to a first down. Daryl Morrell on the tackle for Georgia Southern. And this is going to be very close, and it is a first down. Great job getting the ball out. You start the game, the ball on the five-yard line. Well, that's a terrific job of advancing it right there. Confidence and composure when you take on the number one team in the country on the road, oh so important. And after ruining a chance to get excellent field position with the penalties on the kickoff return, the Bulls come right out and get a first down. They're at the 16. They trail it 7-0. Anderson again in motion for the Bulls. Clemens right up the gut. He's at the 30. Cuts back, and he's on the run. Moreland pushes him out of bounds at midfield. So the Bulls have an answer for that long drive for Georgia Southern. The Bulls take it to midfield, first and ten, two straight first downs for the Bulls. And I, I just have a feeling that we're in for a real shootout here today. Uh, the Georgia Southern defense, the strength of their defense is their defensive front. As we look at the replay here, the zone play opens wide open, and uh, Jermaine Clemens, a nice job on the cutback. That's uh, Earthwind Moreland, number four, that forces him out of bounds. How about the way that Clemens was able to hit that hole in a hurry? Wasn't the biggest hole, but he got through it in a shot. From the 49, Charlie Jackson in motion. First and ten from there, Bulls trail 7-0. Quick pass. Matthews over the 50 to the 45-yard line. South Florida nearly beat this team a year ago when Georgia Southern was rated in the top five. Just like the last time these two teams met, Georgia Southern was just coming off a Southern Conference championship and basically playing for seeding in the playoffs, and the Bulls took them right to the final seconds before losing, basically on a missed two-point conversion. Now that's exactly right. They surprised them last year, not this year. It's a gain of six on first down. Second down and four from the 45 of Georgia Southern. The Eagles scored on their opening possession. Bulls trying to answer. McMillan. Gets very close to the first down before he is pounded by Josh Smithers. Boy, what a game for McMillan on homecoming. He had 102 yards and three touchdowns in the victory over Cumberland. Yeah, we're gonna looking at about third and one and a half. Jo Josh Smithers here is a linebacker from uh, Cardinal Mooney High School. And that's a big hit right there for him. And also Daryl Morrell and Larry Rogers in on the hit. That was really Larry Rogers that did most of the damage. Here's a big third down play. Third down and two. McMillan, second effort, gets the first down. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, they had him dead to rights. That's a missed assignment up front between Kenyatta Jones and uh, Cedric Bell. But uh, somehow... Uh, Dyro McMillan was able to get the first down. I don't know how, but he does. He's a big, strong guy, 220 pounds, and he was able to run through that tackle. Yeah, the former transfer from the University of Miami in Brighton High School. From the 41, they'll mark it at the 40. First down and 10. McMillan again. Tries to cut outside, still going. 
to the 35-yard line. So the Bulls, offensively anyway, did not look intimidated. Playing on the road here at Georgia Southern in a tough setting, even though it's called the prettiest little stadium in America, Paulson Stadium. Right, it is a really a neat setting, and of course, you know, they're looking at having uh, three more games in the stadium this year. And that was a backside blitz that Rodgers, uh, the weak side backer, blitzed. They picked it up. That left the, the uh, gap. It's a gain of five yards on first down from the 35. Remember, this drive started at their own six. This is LaFane Williams in the lineup for the first time. Still going. Brought down at the 20-yard line by Andre Rogers. And, and LaFane has kind of been a missing ingredient uh, from the Liberty game. This is the outside zone play here. And that's a great play for uh, LaFane to run with his speed. And he doesn't hesitate to bounce that outside because he knows he has the speed to get to the corner. Williams with some huge early games in the season. Just coming really off an injury that he got at Liberty. McMillan back in, the only running back right now. First down from the 20. Bulls trail 7-0. McMillan on the carry, over the 20, to the 10-yard line. And Al, that was the weak side blitz again by Larry Rogers, and they've caught him twice in it. Great pickup by Alcott. He saw the blitz come, and he picked it up. And absolutely nobody in the outside B-gap for Georgia Southern. We talked about it before the game started. One of the only ways the Bulls are going to be able to handle the number one team in the country is to get into a shootout. We've got the makings for that right here. Well, they've got to keep that uh, Georgia Southern offense off the field, and they're certainly doing it on this drive. Williams back into the lineup. Second down and very short. Williams has a first down. The legs are still going. Inside the 10 to the 8. Now that was the counter play, the counter tray, and he really, I thought, missed his cut. I thought he should have stayed with the guard and broke it out over the right tackle. He decided to cut it up early. I thought he might have scored, Al, had he stayed with the guard on the play. 4.55 left to go in the opening period. What a showdown here. Number 16, South Florida, taking on undefeated and number one, Georgia Southern, on the road in Statesboro, Georgia. Good job of mi uh, mixing the personnel groupings. This is now Diamond. Three wide receivers, one tight end, one back. First and goal from the eights. Charlie Jackson in motion. The draw. Clements over the five to the three. Jermaine Clements on the carry for the Bulls. Clemens had that huge carry earlier on this drive to take it up to midfield. Harris Jim Levitt wanted to come in and match this team run for run. He's talking to Demetrius Woods, and so far his team has been able to do exactly that. Right. Uh, certainly running the football and with an underneath controlled passing game, and uh, Georgia Southern will give you that. They're a zone team. So this has been a great drive. Need to finish it off. Second and goal from the three. Bishop in motion. LaFayne Williams. Brought down hard at the two-yard line, Eric Davis, along with help and Eric from Larry Rogers. Eric Davis is, a, is an outstanding pro prospect. You watch him here closing. He's 260 pounds. He's got real burst and quickness. He can get some things done. 94, Eric Davis. From Albany, Georgia. He, he's really a heck of a prospect. 6'3", 260. 11 sacks this year. You can see his quickness on that running play. A gain of one on the play. Third and goal from the three. Otis Dixon, his first carry. And again, it's that man Davis. He says, you ain't scoring on me. Fourth down, and Jim Levitt doesn't want to take a chance. And if we look, this is the slant that they run out of split backs, and Kenyatta Jones missed the block on Eric Davis right there. Eric Davis has got enough quickness to get right under that block, and that was the difference right there. Jim Levitt determined to get some points off this drive. Remember, it started at their own six. Gramatica in to attempt a 20-yard field goal. And the Bulls are on the scoreboard. Field goal by Gramatica is good. Your score, Georgia Southern.
2.23 left to go in the opening period. Both teams score on their opening drives. The Eagles, number one in the country, lead it 7-3. Welcome back to Statesboro. The South Florida Bulls with a 20-yard field goal on their opening drive. And they now trail by a score of 7-3. Georgia Southern able to drive 80 yards on its opening possession. The Bulls had to drive from their own six. There's a rare smile during the game for Jim Levitt. He's happy his Bulls were able to finish off that drive with some type of scoring. Now it's up to his defense to hold on. Gramatica will kick off for the Bulls. Joyner and Cunningham to receive. And this will go to Joyner. And he'll just let it go. A long, long kick for Bill Gramatica. And once again, Georgia Southern will take the ball first and 10 from the 20-yard line. You know, I can't help but notice on that kickoff, this Georgia Southern team is really well coached. Jay Mize has been the main guy covering kickoffs, and uh, they're sending Jamar Jones right at Jay Mize at the line of scrimmage, and he nailed him on the opening kickoff. Uh, that time, uh, Jay was able to escape, but barely. Georgia Southern with the football for the second time today. 2.17 left to go in the opening period. Hill quickly to the air again. He hits Dedrick Perra. Short gain on first down. We got a flag, and that, that uh, may be a clip. That was a great job of uh, Demetrius Woods knifing through. It was really a quick screen out to the wideout. That was a terrific play by Demetrius Woods. His burst uh, really showed right there. And I believe they clipped him. A block in the back. You know, what's amazing about this offense for Georgia Southern They've had all season long only 22 three and outs. All season long, and you mentioned this to me, that the majority of that was the second team. Exactly. That really this first team offense only has six three and outs throughout this entire season. Ten football games, and your offense has been three and out six times. That is incredible. And, uh, well, maybe this could be one of those situations. Look at that, South Florida leading the rushing parade in this contest. Amazing. From the 10 yard line. First down and 20. Hill hit immediately, but still able to scramble out to the 15 yard line before he's brought down by Roy Manns. And again, they are just determined. They are going to take that fullback Peterson away, and they're going to do their darndest to take Hill away and force him to pitch the ball. And the, really, the way they teach the option now, I spent all day yesterday here watching films and talking to Coach Johnson. They really uh, want the, it's when, when Greg Hill comes down that line of scrimmage, it's run first, pitch second all the way. I mean, he, they want him to run the football. Hill could be a thousand yard man, both rushing and passing. Second down and 15 from the 15 yard line. 7 3 Georgia Southern. And it looked like the right tackle was moving for Georgia Southern. Well, now, this is really amazing. Uh, you have not seen this happen to this offense much this year. They, they look like they've lost their composure a little bit. Maybe the long drive of South Florida has got them a little bit feeling the pressure. Illegal procedure, so yep. that'll take it back another five yards. Listen to the first down stats, which is really a key when you play this team. Uh, USF so far is averaging 11.8 on first and 10. Georgia Southern 6.4. That's interesting. And when you think about 6.4, normally you would say 6.4, that's an excellent gain on first down, except this team averages eight yards yeah. a carry on first down. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. The stats, you know, they just blow the stat keepers away. Georgia Southern does. There he is, Greg Hill from Sarasota Riverview High School. Again, the fullback, Peterson, and the Bulls are ready and waiting. Anthony Henry there, along with Vasse Mark. You know, an interesting story about Peterson. Again, he's a freshman, considered to be one of the top ball carriers in the country. His brother, of course, a fine linebacker at the University of Florida. He wanted to go to Florida. They ran out of scholarships, wanted to go to South Florida. And again, the Bulls were full and running back. So Peterson comes to Georgia Southern and has one of the biggest freshman seasons in the history of college football. Yeah, he's a redshirt freshman. But boy, Georgia Southern wanted him bad. 
Third down and a long ways to go. Little screen pass. Here's Peterson looking for some blocks, and that's why he's so dangerous. He was pinned in, barely able to get to the 14. Hallelujah. Three and out for Georgia Southern. That's the seventh time this season. Amazing. That is amazing for their first team offense. The seventh time this year, they were able to go three and out. Jim Levin very happy with the way his defensive crew was able to stop the number one rushing offense in Division I AA. And already, that is the end of the opening period. Buckle up and get ready for a wild one. We're at Statesboro, where the Bulls trail the number one team in the country, Adrian Patterson, and USF trails it 7-3. to three. Jim Lovett has to be very happy with the way things went in that opening period. Georgia Southern had outscored its opponents 135-47, to 47. And they'll start the second period of action here. Down, 7-3. to three. Back to receive the punt. Standing at midfield, that's Charlie Jackson. Ready to punt. Standing at his goal line, Kenny Warren from Georgia Southern. Opening play of the second period. Very low kick, line drive. Jackson takes it at the 45. He'll try to turn the corner. Georgia Southern converges very, very quickly and buries him at the 46. On the tackle. For Georgia Southern, Jamar Jones. Here's a look at the opening stats of that opening period. Both teams very close in the first down department. Basically, it's a drive for both teams. Uh, absolutely, and the difference was uh, South Florida couldn't convert from down inside the five-yard line. And, of course, uh, Georgia Southern did. But th this has got the, all the, the makings of a spectacular football game. South Florida Bulls, rated number 16 in the country. Georgia Southern undefeated, rated number one. From the 47, Raphael Williams hit hard at the 48. Larry Rogers, the tackle for Georgia Southern. And I'm seeing some stunning and things from the Georgia Southern defense that I have not seen before. They've really been more of a vanilla, what I call a vanilla defensive front. I've seen more blitzes, and, and you'll see the stunt right here between Davis and Allen, 99, and that really clogged it up. You see, of course, the linebacker, Anthony Scott, uh, getting in there as well. Again, the Bulls had averaged 11 yards per carry on first down. They get only a couple on that one. R.J. Anderson in motion for the Bulls. Barnhart to the air. He's got Hippolyte just over the 45, a yard or two shy of the first down. Got just a little option route by Trevor Hippolyte, and of course, so that's what they want to do. They want to nickel and dime Georgia Southern in the passing game. I did not like the looks of Chad Barnhart's throwing motion in the pregame warm-up, Al. I, I don't think he's anywhere near recovered from that shoulder separation. Uh, but hopefully he can hang in there with the short passing game and not take any hits today, which would really be a problem. They're saying the forward progress from Hippolyte was enough to get that first down, so the Bulls get another first down over midfield at the 49. They trail it 7-3. Just underway here in the second period. Outkick, Doug Raver, live from Statesboro, Georgia. LaFayne Williams breaks one tackle, fights his way, gets basically back to the line of scrimmage, and nothing else. And uh, that's really a big part of the game plan. Uh, talking to Coach uh, Chico Canales, the offensive coordinator this week, uh, you're going to see a lot of two tight end sets, what I call ace personnel, and a lot of check with me by the quarterback based on where they declare the strength. I'm speaking of Georgia Southern. You're going to see the counter, the inside zone, and the outside zone. And that's what they've done so far in these two drives. Very saw, well. Saw Barnhart perfect in the passing department. Three of three again, very short passing. And he's nursing a very sore shoulder. Second down and nine. Barnhart comes back the other way. He's got Matthews with some blocking. At the 40, and he's got some room. At the 30, knocked out of bounds by Earthwind Moreland, but not before the Bulls come back with another big play and another first down. That was a great catch by Matthews. That ball was thrown low, and uh, boy, he barely got his fingers under the ball to keep, scoop it off the ground. This is a quick screen, throw back, uh, quick scroll. Oh, that's a great catch and a good move. Oh, and a great tackle out there by... Uh, Kenyatta Jones that really springs him. A long game. 
on the play. Now at the 21-yard line, Bulls trailing. You see the score, 7-3. 12.43 left to go before halftime. The Bulls are on the, are on the march again. From the 21. McMillan gets away from Davis. Gets it over the 20-yard line. Well, Kenyatta Jones has got his hands full with Eric Davis out there. He is, uh, you know, he's got a lot of talent. He's just a young player, but uh, he's going against... Uh, an outstanding, I think, pro prospect, and uh, he's really got his hands full today with Davis. Davis, 6'3", 260, leads the team with 11 sacks, also 20 tackles for loss. And he's so quick. I mean, that, that's really the difference. It, it, it's always the speed that's the difference with defensive linemen. Jermaine Clemens, the running back. Second down and eight. Charlie Jackson in motion for the Bulls. Draw play. Clemens again, right up the middle. Touchdown, South Florida. Every time that Georgia Southern has blitzed, the Bulls have caught him in the blitzes in the running game, and he was absolutely untouched. And South Florida in Statesboro, Georgia, takes the lead against the number one team in the country. That is really amazing. You see right here, he was untouched. They blitzed right out of the play and caught him in it. Alvin, Ivan Alicott with the key block there to spring him. And again, nobody touches Clemens. Dramatica on the season. Now 40 of 41 on point afters. And don't look now. But the South Florida Bulls are leading the number one team in the country on the road, Statesboro, Georgia, against undefeated Georgia Southern. 10-7 the score. We'll have more of the second period right after this. We're back at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, where the South Florida Bulls are leading number one Georgia Southern 10-7. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or the use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Chromatica kicking off a very long kick. Corey Joyner, that ball goes out of bounds. Flag comes down. Yeah, that's a killer because now they, you know, Georgia Southern takes over at their 35-yard line, and that, that really hurts. Grammatica had had a very long kickoff the last time he kicked off. That kicked it out of the end zone. And there is no breeze here today. So the Eagles will get excellent field position at the 35. South Florida with the lead at 10-7. There's the man that scored the touchdown on a 19-yard touchdown run. Less than three minutes to go the 53 yards. Clemens has had a huge day so far. And the Bulls have the lead at 10-7. One of the first times all season that Georgia Southern has been trailing. The option. Hill gets away from one tackler. Oh, he's dangerous. Takes it up to midfield. Greg Hill on the carry. Well, that was all Greg Hill. I mean, Vasse Mark had him dead to right behind the line of scrimmage. Two more missed tackles. Uh, you know, in the X's and O's games, you can have him covered. But I'll tell you what, Greg Hill is so quick. He, he runs a 4-4-40. Watch him right here. Boom, slips that tackle. Good burst upfield. He benches 300 pounds. He's got some strength. Another missed tackle by the safety. That's why he's so dangerous. He's listed at 163 pounds. And the Bulls determined to stop the fullback Peterson, and they do it. Sean Hay with the flag down. A late flag coming out, and it looks like Bernard Brown will get caught for some late stuff. Well, the wide receivers of Georgia Southern absolutely torture you to death. They chop you, they stay after you. And again, you know, most wide receivers in college football, they, you know, they like to catch the ball. They don't block like, and it's very frustrating to get blocked like that on every single play. Uh, I don't like to call, you know, they, they could call something like that on every down almost. You have to keep your poise if you're South Florida. You cannot become frustrated by all the blocks, the chop blocks, the different angles. You've got to keep your poise. That's a horrible error. 
uh, on their part. And you're talking about a, a penalty that happened probably 10 to 15 yards away from the play. And after the play was over. I mean, that, that's just stupid. Bernard Brown really made a poor decision there. And, and really, they could have called something up on the other side between the wide receiver and, uh, and corner as well. They were going at it. From the 40. Excellent field position again for Georgia Southern. Hill changing the play. The fullback, Peterson, really for the first time, gets away at the 25-yard line. A first down for the Eagles. First time you did today that you see his strength and balance and explosiveness. Down, uh, he, he, he's going to run through tackles. That's how he's made all the yards. Outstanding strength. Almost went the distance right there. Just tripped up. One step away from taking it all the way. He's had a 91-yard touchdown run this season. Closing in on 2,000 yards. Again, he's only a freshman. First down. Peterson again, and this time the Peterson Bulls are ready. Sean Hayes, the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. And that was the Veer scheme. And, and what I mean by the Veer scheme is the tackles are going to totally block down and seal it off inside. And the defensive end has to come all the way down and take the dive. And that's tough to do because with an option team like this, they take big splits. You'll see them, uh, look right here, you'll see three foot splits always across the board, at least three foot splits. Second down and eights. Audible, audible. 80% of the offense are audibles. The pitch. Joyner able to turn the corner inside the 15. And a Bernard Brown had him dead to rights and missed the tackle. You've got to make tackles. You're playing a running option football team. You've got to make tackles. That's a first down. Yep, and this drive has been a result of one, the kickoff being out of bounds, uh, two, the missed tackles. This is the trap option now. And right there's the missed tackle by Brown, and that, that was at the line of scrimmage. That was a devastating missed tackle. At the 12 yard line, first and 10. Greg Hill and the Eagles of Georgia Southern on the march. They trail for one of the few times this season, 10-7 South Florida. Hill, a little quarterback draw that goes nowhere. And that really was the sprint option, in which that's the first time we've seen the sprint option today. That means there's no dive. And look, at here, here's the sprint option. Watch him step back. Clear the line of scrimmage, and here comes the backside guard, and Demetrius Woods took it away. That's great defense by South Florida. I am so impressed with the game plan of uh, Coach uh, Levitz and Rick Kravitz. Derek Basiglio, along with Brian Wilson, also in on the tackle for the Bulls. It's a loss of two on the play, second down and 12. From the 14. Hill again. Brought down immediately by Demetrius Woods and Basse Mark. And Basse Mark put a lick on, on Greg Hill. He really did. You know, the quarterbacks in this option offense, I mean, they take a pounding, but uh, every chance you get, you've got to put a lick on these quarterbacks. And right here from the backside, right there comes Basse Mark. Basse Mark, normally a linebacker. He's playing defensive end today. Uh, to try to get more speed on the field. And also, the defensive ends are playing up in a two-point stance a large percentage of the time to get better vision against this option, to see what's coming. Third down and nine. A huge play on third down. The pitch, Peterson. He's got some room close to the goal line. It, it appears he has a first down. Oh, and that was a big lick by uh, Jason Butler and an obvious breakdown in the defensive scheme someplace on that option. Let's take a look at it here. This is, again, the sprint option, and uh, they have nobody for the pitch. Good uh, good hustle by Jason Butler. Boy, it's good to see him back healthy and playing well. He's been fighting that ankle injury from Western Kentucky. Now he is shy of the first down. This sets up fourth down. How about this? Fourth down against the number one rushing team in the country, against the number one team in the country overall Jim Levitt's defense with the lead here at 10-7 and Georgia excuse me the South Florida Bulls call the timeout 
Yeah, they did not have the right personnel on the field. 7.44 left to go before halftime. The Bulls clinging to a three-point lead over the number one team in the country on the road. Jim Levitt talking X's and O's with his defense. The Bulls have forced a fourth and inches with the number one team in the country, Georgia Southern. Now the Sports Channel Florida, every Saturday morning, 9.30, they'll talk Bulls football. The Jim Levitt Show takes you behind the scenes. The Bulls head coach giving you all the hard-hitting USF highlights and previewing the upcoming opponents right here on Sports Channel. Fourth Georgia Southern has been seven of 10 on fourth downs this season. This is uh, fourth and very, very short. I bet they'd be about 99 out of 100 here normally. Uh, let's see what they attempt to do. They're gonna line up with two wide outs. Very quickly to the line of scrimmage, fourth and inches. Cunningham, and that's Joyner. Trying to draw them off sides. That's exactly what it was. Great poise by the South Florida defense. Outstanding. Tried to draw them off sides on fourth down on about the three yard line and good poise by the Bulls. Again, that's a very young South Florida defense facing a veteran offensive line for Georgia Southern. Paul Johnson's offense not able to draw the Bulls off sides. So again, they'll stay at fourth and inches. Yeah, this offensive line for Georgia Southern is uh, really, really something. The right guard, Mark Williams, is a definite pro pro prospect, 312 pounds. He squats uh, almost 700 pounds. Uh, the right tackle has started 45 games. The left tackle, McGrath, is a returning All-American, as is Williams, the right guard. Two returning All-Americans in that offensive line. And that little guy right there, Winslet, number 59, he's a 245-pound center, and is he quick? I'm impressed with him. He's a little guy, but boy, he can flat play this football game. I don't care how small he is, he can play. That's amazing when you say somebody at 240 pounds is a small offensive lineman. That's but it is very small days. by today's standards. Fourth and inches at the three. Bulls lead it 10 7. Georgia Southern on a huge fourth down play. Quarterback sneak. I think that's illegal. The back bumped into the quarterback uh, after he was already uh, into the line. That is supposed to be a penalty. The officials blew that call. No question. The back, uh, if we could get a shot of this, the back came from behind the quarterback, hit him in the pile, and that is definitely a violation. He's the one that really gave Hill the momentum. Watch this right here. Watch Hill. There's the back coming in. Peterson pushing the quarter. That's a penalty. I'm sorry. They blew that call big time. And they're trying to find the position on the play. Is it a first down? Georgia Southern says yes. The Bulls aren't so sure. I Let's think take they a look. got it. Let's take, it's going to be close, but I, I think they got it. Stretch them all the way out. Yep, by, Not by, much. by inches. And that push in the back by Peterson was the difference in gaining that first down. I hate to see the officials miss an obvious call like that on a crucial play. Yeah, let's take a look at it again. Here you see right here. Now watch Peterson. Boom. That's the push that gives him the first down. That's a clear violation. Mr. Official, sir, watch the ball game, please. First and goal. Peterson able to score. Touchdown. Georgia Southern. Adrian Peterson just tied the NCAA record with a 24th touchdown, excuse me, 25th touchdown on the season. And Chambers will attempt the point after. Well, I, re I really hate to see such a crucial call in a, on a fourth down play be blown by the officials like that was. Chambers is good. And Georgia Southern runs its lead to 14-10. 7.21 left to go before halftime. Georgia Southern and Adrian Peterson have an answer for the South Florida Bulls. They now lead it at 14-10.
are back in Statesboro, Georgia, where Georgia Southern has rallied to take the lead on the South Florida Bulls on that drive. Doug Graber, a couple of mistakes really burned the South Florida Bulls. Well, that was a drive of mistakes, starting right with a kickoff that went out of bounds. And then the missed tackles on uh, on Hill at the line of scrimmage. Another missed tackle by Bernard Brown. A and penalty. the holding penalty uh, the, by the, Brown. The, the penalty against uh, the secondary. Bernard Brown again. And then, of course, the officials made a mistake on that drive as well. I, I hate to... Uh, complain about that but that's such an obvious call and it really was the key in the play and him gaining the first down he gained it by inches on fourth and inches Peterson coming up pushing the quarterback from behind in order to get the first down and that led to that touchdown run by Peterson 14-10 you know, otherwise it's first and 10 going the other way in my opinion Chambers ready to kick off back to receive for the Bulls Charlie Jackson Very high kick. One yard deep. Jackson keeps his feet going near the 20 yard line. And he's tackled by Benny Cunningham. Well, at almost every play, uh, you know, you get a feeling of this uh, Florida Georgia rivalry. You're seeing a, a lot of chippiness out of both football teams. At almost every play, somebody's pushing and shoving and jawing and talking. And that, that really, uh, the, the Florida kids, they're, they're, there's the thing there, you know, with that uh, Florida-Georgia All-Star game, but no question about it, it's certainly a part of this game. And you talk to both coaches, you're getting that really, uh, you know, the country boys against the city slickers, oh, yeah. and they don't like each other in no, this sir, matchup. No, sir, they don't. These teams don't like each other. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. <laughs> That's Raphael Williams. Very little running room. Arky Thompson coming up from his free safety position to make the tackle. Arky Thompson is really an interesting story. Came here and was recruited in basketball. Started for the basketball team here at Georgia Southern last year. Uh, they talked him into coming out for football, and now he's a football player. He's done with basketball, which I don't think the basketball coach is real happy about. Uh, but uh, he has six interceptions already, and he's just learning how to play the game. He's never lifted weights. He's just an athlete back there. They're really excited about his future. Leading tackler on this team with 100 tackles on the season. Second down and eights. McMillan turning those feet over the 30-yard line and a first down for the Bulls. And uh, the power of uh, McMillan again, he, he uh, makes a guy miss at the line of scrimmage. And uh, they have so many good backs. So watch uh, McMillan here simply running the outside zone play. Now he cuts it back. And good forward lean, former leading rusher for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, obviously, this guy has ability, and it's tough to get all these backs on the field because South Florida has about six outstanding running backs. You're talking Williams, Clemens, Lafayne Williams, Otis Dixon, Dyro McMillan. All of them could be feature backs. Absolutely. From the 33, first and 10. Lafayne Williams spins away with flags down. And uh, number 94, Eric Davis, is really, really making his presence uh, felt on this football field today. He's really the one that caused that play, uh, caused him to cut right back into the linebacker. And uh, Kenyatta Jones is really struggling with Eric Davis. The penalty against Georgia Southern. They jumped the just a little bit before the snap. Uh, Al, I thought he got back, but apparently he must have not got totally back from the football and uh, was lined up offside when the ball was snapped. I'm seeing Georgia Southern do more different things on defense than I've seen them do in the last six games. A lot of blitzing. Uh, they've been primarily a three-deep team. Uh, this is more man coverage than I've seen them play. I think they know that they're going to have to roll the dice a little bit to stop this South Florida offense. If there is a weak spot on this number one team in the country, a team that is undefeated, it has been defense. But their rushing game has really taken a lot of pressure off this defense. Certainly has. They have not had a close game this year, honestly. First and five. Play clock down to four. Barnhart, that is Pitts. And that's the first uh, play today on the field that uh, I think Chad's uh, shoulder injury kind of showed itself right there on that play. Just looked a little bit tentative 
uh, throwing that football. Take a look at it right here. Three-step drop. And uh, that was uh, Cedric Bell uh, blocking uh, Vonsellis Allen. He got up to bat it away. 286-pound Vonsellis Allen from Douglas, Georgia, state wrestling champ. Uh, he's an outstanding. Those are the two players for those guys, Eric Davis and Vonsellis Allen, two great defensive linemen. Second down and five, Raphael Williams. Again, very little running room. Daryl Morrill, the tackle for Georgia Southern. And that was uh, Big Jimmy Fitz, the freshman guard, who started at right guard in this game, and he really uh, got a pancake block on that play, but the back was not able to cut it back enough inside of it. Williams will leave. Big play here, Al. Third and about three. Big play for the South Florida Bulls. USF two out of three in their third down conversion so far. Raphael Williams out, LaFane Williams in, along with Otis Dixon. Third down. Here's an audible. Audible lined up in a blitz look. LaFane Williams on the pitch. Georgia Southern will try to string it out and does. Coming up to make the tackle, Arky Thompson. Arky Thompson on the stop. No gain on the play. You know, Al, everything is relative. When we say Georgia Southern has struggled a little bit defensively this year, I mean, that's on their standards. You know, and let me explain this clearly. This is still one of the best defenses that South Florida has played all year. And they can run, and there's a holding penalty on that play. They'll probably decline, I would think. Yep. Paul Johnson says, no thanks, I want the football. Paul Johnson is really uh, an interesting fellow. I've known him for uh, five years now. Uh, no penalty against South Florida decline. Fourth down for South Florida. Former offensive coordinator at Navy broke all their records there. Former offensive coordinator at Hawaii. Uh, he was the guy about 14 years ago that was an assistant here at Georgia Southern under the legendary Irk Russell. He's really the one that designed this offense, this double slot option offense. Tony Umholtz will punt for the first time today. He's been one of the top punters in the country in Division I AA. And Corey Joyner is really one of the numb returners in one AA football. He's ranked seventh in one AA in returns. Rogers back to receive. A very high punt. Rogers will call a fair catch. And it oh. hits him, and the Bulls have a chance to recover. They do. And recover. At the 22-yard line. Rush down South Florida. An unusual mistake by Corey Joyner. And that high, high punt is really what set it up. That was tough to handle. Here's again, Rogers. Yeah. Oh, it was. That's a bad mistake by Rogers. I don't know why Corey Joyner was not in the game. He's been their punt returner all year long. Umholtz again, one of the top punters in Division One AA, coming through there, and the Bulls are in business at the 23-yard line. They trail it 14-10, 434 left to go before halftime. Big USF. break here got to take advantage of these opportunities. If it's going to be an upset, you have to take advantage of all your opportunities. The Bulls are rated number 16 in the country. Georgia Southern undefeated, rated number one. From the 23, first and 10. Bulls trail, 14-10. Raphael Williams, left side, nothing there. Larry Rogers, the tackle for Georgia Larry Southern. Rogers yeah, Larry Rogers was chopped and was uh, up off the ground as quick as he was knocked down and got up to make the play. That's no gain on the play. Actually, they're saying it's a gain of one. South Florida has been averaging 7.5 on first down, so that hurts a little bit right there. Georgia Southern, by the way, is averaging 6.1 on first down. Second down and nine. Jackson in motion. Draw play, LaFayne Williams. Georgia Southern sniffed it out. Daryl Morrow in to make the tackle for the Eagles. We got another chippy penalty called downfield. 
a stupid, stupid error. I don't know if this is on South Florida or I don't know if it is on Georgia Southern, but again, that chippy stuff going on. And Von Sellis Allen is coming off and not looking very good, limping badly as he comes off. That could really hurt Georgia Southern. Allen, one of their top defensive linemen. Uh, and what's this? Sportsman like. Oh, that's a stupid error. Now that takes him out of field goal range. Let's take a look at it. I think we have it. Leon here it Matthews, is right here at 19. the end of the play. Uh, that's very, very foolish by a young football player, Leon Matthews. You've got to keep your poise, son. You cannot do that. Matthews, a sophomore out of Sebring. Now that's a good call by the officials. You just cannot allow that to go on and a foolish, foolish penalty by South Florida. And penalties have been a problem for this team really all year long, Al. You the South Florida Bulls poise. had a golden opportunity recovering the punt inside the 25-yard line. Now the penalty takes him out to the 40. Leon Matthews with the personal foul, and now the Bulls are out of field goal range. Well, you certainly now you're looking at second and about... Uh, 20, 25, second and 25. Now, you can't get it all in one chunk. Be smart here, Chad Barnhart. Number one thing is get back to field goal range. Stacked wide receivers on the right side. Charlie Jackson in motion. Barnhart with time. He hits Jackson, and what a hit by Kowaki Thomas. You can feel that up here, Doug Graver. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, you're playing with the big boys here. Uh, Georgia Southern, an outstanding football team uh, throughout. Kowalki Thomas uh, runs a 4-4, 180-pound corner. He's a good football player. Watch his hit. Crossing route, and they're playing a soft zone, and he's really just sitting there waiting for it. Gets a good break on the football. Of course, Charlie Jackson, he don't weigh but about 150 pounds, so, you know, he's going to take some licks. That's a shame. They missed a golden opportunity there on the 23-yard line where they started that drive. Umholtz will punt, standing at his 50. Now Joyner yeah. is in the ballgame. Now Joyner is back. I guarantee he'll be back. Rodgers had fumbled the last punt. And the Bulls take the penalty, delay of game. This will give Umholtz a little more room. Yep, delay of game. And uh, Tony is primarily a, a high lob punter in this situation. That just gives him a little more room to work with. Georgia Southern says he doesn't want the penalty. Yeah, and, I, and if I were them, I would decline it. And that's exactly what they did. He said, okay. Mr. Umholtz, if you can't uh, cough and corner kick the ball, then let's see you try to do it from here. Good call. Jim Levitt's loving this stuff. He loves the competition. He loves taking on the number one team in the country. He's so excited about this game last night. From the 50. Very high punt. Beautiful punt. I think punt they got it Umholtz. inside. Put it down. Job, it down. Down. Inside the 10 yard line at the 7. Excellent play by the South Florida Bulls special teams. And you know, Doug Graver's special teams have really carried this team throughout. They've had six block punts throughout this season. Yeah, uh, they've had an outstanding year on the special teams. And uh, Georgia Southern is an outstanding special teams football team as well. So every single snap in the kicking game is really going to be a challenge and a battle. 2.05 left to go in the first half. Jim Levitt and his defense going to have to hold the number one team in the country down over these last 2.05. From the nine. Hill keeps it. And he is so, so quick. That's a first down over the 20. And the right slot by, back uh, before the snap kind of jumped a little bit, and the officials uh, just didn't quite catch it. But here, this is just the triple option. That's the loaded triple option. That means when I say loaded, they're going to block the guy who's assigned to the quarterback, and they caught South Florida in at that time. It's a first down to the 21. Georgia Southern with the lead at 14-10. Still to the air. 
He's got Joyner over the middle. Another first down inside the 40. Yeah, Corey Joyner is uh, really one of the uh, outstanding athletes. He, uh, he's a, one of the few seniors on this football team. And here's the option pass where the safety has to pick him up and he gets turned the wrong way. You see Anthony Henry right there just turned the wrong way. And that's a mistake and you can't recover. From the 42, 138 to go in the first half. The number one team in the country on a march. The fullback, Peterson, takes it up over the 45. I would bet that this is the worst half. In fact, I know it is. This is the worst half of football that Adrian Peterson has had this year. And uh, they have really done an effective job of taking the fullback away. Hill has hurt him a little bit, and the pitches early have hurt him in the option. 43 yards in the passing department. He's also had some big plays running the football. Here's an audible. Less than a minute. Peterson, good hit by uh, Jay Mize. Jay Mize is in the game playing the backside linebacker now. That was a good hit by him. On the stop, Jay Mize. And Georgia Southern calls a timeout with 47 seconds remaining. This is a crucial, crucial juncture in this game with the ball almost at midfield, Alcat. Uh, if South Florida can uh, can hold Georgia Southern down on this drive. And that's the one thing about this offense. When they do throw the football, uh, Jim Levin having a good time on the sideline. That's great to see. There's Coach Johnson talking it over with Greg Hill. But their passing game, when they do get into a situ situation where they have to throw, uh, they run the five-step run and shoot, the old Mouse Davis run and shoot passing game. And that sets up beautifully for their offensive formation. So they really can hurt you on both sides of the ball. That's the biggest difference between Greg Hill and Willie Taggart, the great option quarterback for Western Kentucky, is Greg Hill can flat throw the football. He really can. I'm not saying Willie can't throw it at all, but uh, Greg Hill is certainly the superior thrower of the two. You know, it's very interesting seeing Jim Levin over there on the sidelines. We're seeing him smile. We're seeing him fairly relaxed. How much does that give confidence to a team when you're on the road playing the number one team in the country? Uh, the head coach has to lead the way with poise. And, uh, you know, this is fun. This is football. This is fun. I mean, sometimes we make it out to be life and death, and it's important. The Eagles enjoying the action, but this is supposed to be fun. And I'll tell you, this is fun with an opportunity to play such a great team. Third down and five. From the 48, 47 seconds left to go in the first half. 14-10, Georgia Southern. The pitch. Peterson. Great pursuit by South Florida. That's a great job, and now that's fourth down. I, I don't think he has it here, Al. It's a gain of three. Well, he, it is fourth down. They're about two yards shot. He got a very, very generous spot. 21 seconds and counting. Clock winding down. Paul's going to let the clock and let the half run out, and I think both coaches would be happy to have the clock run out here. They call timeout now with four seconds. Timeout, South Florida. Yeah, that's South a good call. Florida calling the timeout. Make them punt the football or make them do something. I don't think that Paul Johnson will punt it. I, I think that would be a mistake. They're, they're going to run some kind of a play where they can run off these final four seconds, because I don't think you want to punt it here. Especially against this special team that has blocked six punts. Right, because, uh, you know, with six blocks on the season, if they line up in a punt formation, I'll guarantee you South Florida's coming with ten at least. And four I seconds left to go in the first half. 14-10, Georgia Southern. What a first half this has been. And, of course, uh, Peterson, now this is the worst half he's had rushing, just like I uh, expected. Uh, he's got 41 yards today at, uh, at the half, and uh, that's, that's not like him at all. You're talking about a guy that averages 181 yards per game. Yep. Uh, it, but the credit to South Florida coaching staff and their defense, they have executed. They were not going to let Peterson beat him, and he hasn't so far. It's only halftime. <laughs> <laughs> And four seconds before halftime at that. Right. Hill on fourth and short with the four seconds 
He may try to get a cheap one. Going deep. Hill. And Brown intercepts it at the goal line, and that is the end of the first half. And what a first half it is for the South Florida Bulls. They have given the number one team in Division I AA all it could handle. The Bulls take a 10-7 lead early in the second period. And Georgia Southern answers to take the 14-10 advantage, but the Bulls have certainly had their way with one of the top offenses in Division I AA, the number one rushing defense, excuse me, the number one rushing offense, and the South Florida Bulls take that number one team in the country to halftime, trailing only by four at 14-10. Yeah, and if, really, if it weren't for, you know, the four or five foolish mistakes that South Florida has, they're up right now. So th this has really been a great football game, and, of course, the Bulls are playing for everything. If they can win today and beat this number one team, I think they certainly Let, would Let's have go down to the field. We've got Jim Levick. Coach, you have to be happy with the way your defense has really held Peterson down. Well, you know, they're a pretty good team, obviously. Gee, uh, yeah, you know, but they've got that pitch early, and that's kind of tough, you know, and uh, you just got to got defense all the, all the phases, you know, and it's a 60-minute ball game. Should be, it's it's, uh, it's kind of fun. You know, it's a, it's a fun football game. I see you're having fun. And Heck a final yeah. question, offensively, you're hey, able listen, to move you the guys, football. You guys, let's, uh, let's get fired up for second half, see what happens, all right? I'm going to keep moving. All right, all you right. go into halftime. Thanks okay, for joining us. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> he's not wound up, is he? <laughs> no, he's not too tight. He's got a couple nickels in him, I believe. 14-10, Georgia Southern, the number one team in the country, undefeated, leading number 16, South Florida. We'll have our halftime show right after this. You better sit down and buckle up and get ready for a wild second half of action. South Florida trailing the number one team in the country, undefeated Georgia Southern, 14-10. And the Eagle has landed here in Statesboro and Paulson Stadium, a new st uh, statue for the Eagles here of Georgia Southern, unveiled right before the ball game, and that is the real Eagle. Taking in all the action here at beautiful Paulson Stadium, the prettiest little stadium in America, seating some 18,000, and we have an excellent crowd today as we get ready for the second half of play. Good crowd on hand. You know, this is a tough place to play, Al. I talked to one college head coach this week that told me, and this is true, told me that when he played here, and when his team went in their locker room before the game, after the warm-up, there was some snakes in the locker room. And the guys weren't real excited about that. But, uh, you know, fact or, or fiction, this is a tough place to play and win games. And Jim and his staff have done a spectacular job preparing this team for this environment up here. And they have answered every challenge so far. Boy, there's a guy in his element. Smile on his face, taking on the number one team in the country on the road. His team down by four. He's loving every single minute of this. And the Bulls will get the football to start things off here in the second half. LaFayne Williams and Jermaine Clemens back to receive. Chambers will kick off for Georgia Southern, the number one team in the country, leading by four at 14-10. This is a line drive that goes out of bounds, and the Bulls will get excellent field position at the 35-yard line. And that's a mistake by Georgia Southern. You just, in a game like this, you cannot afford to make those kinds of errors, and now South Florida gets a good start on the 35-yard line without having to do any work. Both teams known for their return games. Both kickers very aware of that, and they're trying to pin those return men in corners, and when they make a mistake, they pay for it dearly at the 35-yard line. Chad yeah. Barnhart able to move his offense throughout the first half again he's nursing a very sore shoulder we've not seen him go down the field with the ball yet al and that's really one of the key things and as much blitzing as they're getting uh, he's eventually going to have to get it down the field we'll see if he can do it lafane williams the only running back in the backfield first and 10 from the 35 bulls trail at 14 10 just underway third period Williams trying to break it outside. Left side, able to turn the corner, gets near the 40-yard line before he's collared down by Daryl Morrell. And Daryl Morrell runs a 4-4-40 for Georgia Southern. Now, he is clearly their top linebacker. And, uh, you know, when you're a linebacker and you run 4-4, uh, you can chase things down to the sideline because, really, 
I thought that the ghost, Lafayne Williams, had a chance for a big play there. But, boy, what a great job by Morrell. It was a gain of 40 yards on the play, second down and six. Play action. Barnhart lays it out there. Anderson wide open at the 40 and much more. Knocked out of bounds at the 35. Another first down for the South Florida Bulls. I'm watching Chad as he goes back to the huddle. That's really the first long throw of the day, and he really couldn't put much on that ball. And let's take a look at it here. That's a good job by uh, Chico Canales, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, you can see right, that's not the Chad Barnhart that we know, but he gets the ball in there, and that's all that counts. Barnhart now coming to the sidelines. Glenn Gantz coming in. So Barnhart was bothered by that throw. Yep, uh, you could see it, and I think he uh, re-injured his shoulder in attempting to make that throw down the field. That's a shame. A lot heavy load now for Glenn Gantz. Gantz, 13 of 19, three touchdowns against Cumberland in the victory on homecoming. Otis Dixon tripped up at the line of scrimmage. And Otis Dixon there, uh, I think he was kind of a stumbling even before that. He just, there was something that was not a clean exchange. There's Gant. Again, he had to be the man on homecoming. He's hit 61% of his passes this year, so, you know, he's uh, he, he's had some experience, and that's a key thing, but uh, he's certainly not had the experience of Barnhart. He's a sophomore out of Sarasota. Played against Greg Hill in high school. Anderson in motion. Dixon again. Barrels his way over the 30, over the 25, and it appears he has another first down for the South Florida Bulls. Well, I'll tell you what, when he lowers his pads, you know, he, he, he's not very tall. He's short in stature. Uh, that's a nice way to say that. But uh, he's got a lot of uh, weight with him, 220 pounds. And watch him lower the pads here and move this pile. Watch the pile just keep moving. Oh, that's great. That's great. Great leg drive and balance. It's just, a game of leverage. He is just shy of the 30. And this will set up third down and inches. Dixon, the only man in the backfield. He's got the first down, and he gets it over the 20. Did you see the way he used his head as a weapon against those defenders? Marky yeah, Thompson talking to himself as he gets up. He, he sure did. Let's take a look at this third and short here. This is a good guy to get it to. Watch this collision. Boom. That's our key Thompson, and uh, he's going to have to get in the weight room right here because he's not ready for that yet. He's going to say, you know, basketball isn't so bad after no, maybe, all. Maybe I'll go back and attempt some three-pointers. <laughs> it's a first down at the 20-yard line. Again, Barnhart on the sidelines. He has re-injured his shoulder. Dixon again. Still keeps the feet moving. He turned what appeared to be a sure loss into a couple-yard gain. Rodgers on the tackle. And that for was Georgia a, Southern. Yeah, Benji Harris is really the guy that blew up that play, and that was the counter play, and Ivan Alcott was pulling, and the Benji Rogers right there, number 44, uh, came right under Alcott, and there was just no place to go with the football. And there's Chad Boat. I know he wants to be in there in the worst way. He's really struggling with a shoulder injury. From the 19, second down and nine. Play action. Put down with some blocking at the 10. Very close to the 5. Another first down for the South Florida Bulls. Well, and I'll tell you, Cliff Dell has given this team as a senior. He has given them a great senior year. He really lowers his pads right here on this. Uh, this is really a, a form of the rocket screen. Uh, they ran the same play earlier in the game. Got blocking out in front, but watch, watch Cliff Dell lower his pads right here and get extra yards. This is a physical, hard-nosed football game. There are some banging going on in Statesboro. At the seven, first and goal. Once again, Barnhart on the sideline. Injured shoulder. Glenn Gant has come in and performed very well on this drive. Otis Dixon left side going for the goal line. Touchdown, South Florida. Dixon on the touchdown run for South Florida. Seven yards.
Can you believe it? The Bulls take the lead on the number one team in the nation in Statesboro. And uh, folks, uh, nobody, and certainly the folks up here in Georgia expected this, but the Bulls had a great week of preparation. Let's look at the replay here. And uh, this is the guy that they want to carry the football down here inside the 10 yard line and watch him lower the pads, fighting, trying to, oh, that's a great job extending over right over the top of the Georgia Southern DB to put the ball in the end zone. Kenyatta Jones, a right tackle with the fine play to bust things open. Grammatica adds to it. And don't look now, but the South Florida Bulls, rated number 16 in the country, have come back on the opening drive in the third period. They lead undefeated and number one Georgia Southern by a field goal. The South Florida Bulls not only battling the number one team in the country, a team that's undefeated, also fighting for a playoff spot. Leading 17-14, the scoring drive. Takes 404, 65 yards. Dixon with the seven-yard run, and there's the man, Chad Barnhart, who left during that drive, re-injuring his throwing shoulder. He will basically be on a play-by-play -play basis. It depends on the game on if he goes back into the contest for the South Florida Bulls. Grammatica to kick off. Cunningham and Joyner back to receive. A very long kick. And Georgia Southern will get the ball at the 20-yard line. That's a good way to take the kicking game out of it, or the return game out of it anymore, anyway, for uh, Georgia Southern. And I'll tell you, Jim, is, uh, I'm sure that they've made some changes at the halftime. Let's look at the stat. This is certainly not normal uh, for this offense, Al. Nearly 200 yards rushing per game. They're well behind that. Look at that. They average nearly seven yards per rush. About a yard difference there. And they've not been able to crank up the passing game. First down from the 20. Georgia Southern trailing for the second time today. Hill, the pitch, Joyner, and he is nailed by Anthony Henry. Georgia Southern made a mistake that time because if you're going to pitch the football, you cannot leave the free safety unblocked. And they uh, did not block him, and that's a great job of Anthony Henry come up and making a play, uh, really, for about a one-yard gain. Second down and long for Georgia Southern. Hill, the pitch again, and this time, Peterson has some room. He is hit by Roy Manns, but not before Peterson gets a first down. And that's really his longest game today. Yeah, and that's a mistake. Uh, Glenn Davis, number 24, the right corner for Georgia Southern, came inside the block, which is a cardinal rule in football, and he got blocked. And uh, now you had the corner. Let's take a look at it here. This is the uh, the sprint option. Watch Peterson here take the pitch. And right, right there, you see uh, Davis come inside. And that's it. He's got the corner. It's good for a first down from the 45. The spin. Hill keeps it. Gets away from one tackler. But right there, the South Florida Bulls are ready. Demetrius Woods along with Anthony Williams on the tackle. And the one thing I notice here, Al, at the half, right off the bat, I see uh, Georgia Southern has increased the splits in the offensive line. Right now, they're taking at least three and a half splits, and I foot uh, three and a half foot splits, excuse me, and that's an attempt to create more room for Peterson to run inside. No question about it. No gain on the play. Second down and ten. The Bulls lead it, 17-14 over the number one team in the country. Hill pulls it back, gets away from Hay. This is when he's really dangerous. But right there to make the tackle, Bernard Brown. That's one of those good news, bad news things, Coach, because he was able to get away, but the Bulls were able to keep him contained. Yeah, and that was, again, the speed of South Florida that allowed him to make this play. Look at the replay here. That's the trap option. Gets spun around, comes all the way back across the field. Thurman Edwards. And that's a good job by Bernard Brown staying home and making the play on the backside. Hey, now you got an option team and third and long. Should be an advantage to the Bulls defense. 
Once again, only seven times this year, this first team offense has been held to three and out. They've not been able to do it here, but they are holding this team somewhat. Hill again keeps it to the 50 and Barry. Unbelievable. That's the second three and out today for this uh, great offense of Georgia Southern. Uh, it only happened six times all year going into this game. Roy Mann on the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. And Jim Levitt is not so sure that this team's going to punt. They are not going to punt. And the Bulls immediately have to call timeout. Look at Jim Levitt. He says, all right, this is a great matchup of wits here. Right. And uh, that, again, this is something you all, when you play an option team and it's fourth down, you get that. We've got 7.51 left to go in the third, fourth and five for Georgia Southern. We'll have it right after this. Georgia Southern, eight of 12 on fourth down this season. Doug Graber, fourth down and four. Just over midfield, you're not surprised this team's going for it. Oh, not at all. That's the whole theory of an option offense. If it's fourth and under five, even on their own 20, you better be ready because they'll go for it a, a, a really a large percentage of the time. Army used to do it on, on their own 10-yard line all the time. Not so much confidence they have in their ability to make four yards. Bulls lead at 17-14. Huge play on fourth down. Hill keeps it, and he is stopped shy of the marker. Wow. Sean Hay, that wow. may mark. Bernard Brown, Demetrius Woods, all in on the tackle, along with Anthony Williams, and a huge defensive play for the Bulls. Well, South Florida here was in a full blitz attack mode. Oh, that's a great effort by Sean Hay. Good job by Vase, Mark, and Demetrius Woods staying home. Uh, they are really, really running to the football and playing ball. Now, a great opportunity for the South Florida Bulls right here. Glenn Gant, the quarterback. Once again, Chad Barnhart on the sidelines, nursing a very tender shoulder. From the shotgun, and look at this offensive set. What will Georgia Southern do here? And a quick pass, LaFayne Williams, able to get away from one blocker, and that's a one-yard gain. So Georgia Southern able to dodge a bullet there. Well, that's what South Florida calls the wacky bull. And the wacky bull uh, didn't get it done right there. But they're going to line up in again with no huddle here in the same set, Al. Once again, you've got a backup quarterback in Glenn Gant trying to confuse this Georgia Southern defense. Georgia Southern did a, really a great job for not being prepared for that, for getting lined up against that formation. They really did. Now it's a normal formation. Five on the play clock. Two, just able to beat it. Yeah, his wounds over midfield to the 46. Sets up another crucial third down. Well, what a place for a uh, young guy Glenn Gant to be in. Uh, not much experience. Uh, boy, this is a tough situation to be in on the road in Statesboro, Georgia, with everything on the line for this football team. There's, There's the South Florida staff. They're not too pumped up, are they? Rick Kravitz in the middle. What a job he's done today. That defensive staff, been outstanding. Third down and four. Hippolyte in motion. Five on the play clock. Here comes the blitz. Gant, yeah. can he get it outside? Nearly intercepted by Archie Thompson. He has six interceptions on the season, nearly picked off number seven. They were trying to hit Hippolyte. Well, you can see why they're so excited about Archie Thompson and his future. Uh, Glenn is forced out of the back pocket here, and watch the recovery that Thompson makes right there. And really, the ground caused him to not uh, keep that interception, or he would have had seven. What a great athlete he is. He has great range back there. That's what they talked about all week as I talk to their staff, and I sure can't see it. Humboldt standing at his 40, back to receive. Joyner, he's standing at his 10. Again, a very high punt. 
the fair catch at the 14. But the main thing for the South Florida Bulls, they're able to win a battle of field position right now against this oh-so-dangerous rushing offense of Georgia Southern. The Bulls and Jim Levitt with the three-point lead over the number one team in the country on the road. Rocky the Bull making the trip to Statesboro on the Georgia Southern sideline. <laughs> Meanwhile, the number one team in the country now trails 17-14, and it is not in a very good mood. 6.34 left to go in the third. From the 15, Greg Hill and the Eagles. The pitch, Joyner. He's got some room over the 30 and a first down for Georgia Southern. I thought I saw a flag thrown on the sideline. Let's take a look. I just out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw a flag come out. I think South Florida's about due to have one go their way. South Florida has an injured player over on the sideline. And that is Bernard Brown. And that would be really a tough loss because Edwin Green, uh, his backup is already out of this game. Boy, that's a that looks like a severe ankle injury. Yeah, and that's what you get when you play this team and all the chop blocking, which is totally legal. But that's the danger you have. You've got to get bent your knees and get your hands down and protect your legs all the time when you play a team like this. That could be a broken ankle for Brown. He's had a fine game at that cornerback position. Boy, that's a tough loss because now you're looking at either uh, Lakenji Cooper, a freshman who's not played a lot this year, or Mike Sr., another corner who I saw limping off the field uh, after a special teams play earlier in the game, and you got Mike Sandy now in the game. Mike Sandy, a transfer from uh, Rutgers, a kid I recruited when I was up at Rutgers from Osceola, St. Pete. That does not look good at all. Let's take a see if we can see what happens here. It's number 23. Uh, he's to the left top of your screen right there. Well, we can't see uh, at all what happened there. He got caught up in the feet of his own uh, guy. It must have yeah, like turned it. his ankle when it came down right there, it looks like. It's hard to say. Well, I'm but sure the Bulls are hoping it is only an ankle sprain, but the way it looks. Yeah, they just put so much uh, pressure on your defense. Every si They're relentless. They're absolutely relentless. Every single play of the game, chopping, and they just stay after you, stay after you, stay after you. And uh, it really is uh, tough to deal with. It takes a lot of concentration to handle that the whole game. And well, in fact, they have put him on a stretcher, and they'll take him to the bench and probably to the locker room. And that indeed may be a broken ankle. As Jim Levitt, you watch Coach Levitt uh, signaling the defense, he along with Coach Kravitz upstairs. It is good for a first down over the 30-yard line. Bulls lead at 17-14, 6-26, and counting here in the third. The rollout. Hill keeps it. Not able to turn the corner. Roy Mann, the tackle. Yeah, that's a sprint out run all the way. There was never, the wide receiver was blocking downfield. There was never any thought of throwing the football. Sprint out run for Greg Hill. You know, and you go back to this program. They've won four national championships. Uh, Tracy Ham, uh, who's now playing up in uh, Canada and, and coached here for a while, was a great option quarterback they had back in the 80s that won them back-to-back -back in 85 and 86. He, of course, went to the same high school as Peterson. Absolutely. And there is Peterson. Very little gain on second down. Jason Butler, the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Another third down. Boy, I'll tell you, Demetrius Woods put a lick on Greg Hill uh, when he was carrying out that fake. And, you know, he didn't like it. But, hey, when you're an option quarterback and you carry out fakes, you're going to get hit. You have to accept that. That's part of the deal. Third down and three. Uh, they split the set here, Al. We've got the really uh, only one back and three wide receivers. Hill is so dangerous. 
Gets away for the first down, but tackling him in midfield, Demetrius Woods. Boy, and Demetrius Woods' athleticism saved him there because uh, he, he might have hit his head on the goalpost. I mean, it was wide open going down the field. Let's take a look at it. Uh, you see uh, Anthony Henry and Roy Manns both running with the receivers, and boy, Demetrius Woods saved him right there. Another first down for the Eagles. Just over midfield. Bulls lead it by a score of 17-14. Peterson. Boy, look at his balance. Able to keep moving. Very close to the 40-yard line and another first down. Outside against the Bulls. And Georgia Southern's fine left tackle, Rich McGrath, just came out of the game. And you got Marvin James, 66, who's in to replace him. This looks like it's, uh, they're going to decline this penalty out, but this looks like uh, Georgia Southern's answer here in the second half. They're going to go to some triples and some unbalanced against uh, the fronts that South Florida's been playing because they really have confused them in this half, and they've certainly taken away Peterson up to this point. Second down and two from the 41. Peterson, just hey, over the 40. Basse Mark among the tacklers, along with Sean Hay and Joey Camaro. And he, he got a favorable spot there. He may have the first down. This is going to be close. Yeah, he does have it. Crucial juncture of the game here, Al. 431 in the third quarter uh, at your own 38-yard line. You've got to make something happen here. By the way, Chad Barnhart is throwing on the sideline for the South Florida Bulls. Hill on the option, keeps it, and he could go a ways. Over the 30, over the 25, a first down for Georgia Southern. That's what makes option football so tough. You make one mistake and you're looking at a big play. And in that case, uh, Roy Manns here uh, misses the tackle. This is the sprint option. And watch Manns, he's cat and he slips. Roy Manns uh, slipped on the cat and mouse, could not come back on the quarterback. I think he got a little bit too wide on the quarterback and his angle anyway, to be honest with you. At the 24, another first down for the Eagles. They trail by three. Joyner. And he has a lay down to the 10 yard line and another first down for Georgia Southern. Well, no question about it. They really have South Florida on their heels right now. And again, here comes the pitch. They're take, they're, they've done a good job on the quarterback, decent job uh, on the fullback, but now the pitch is what's hurting them again, just like it did early in the game. And uh, no cat and mouse there, and when you don't, Cat and mouse, in other words, slow play the quarterback. The pitch is coming out fast, and that puts a lot of pressure on the safeties. At the 11, first down. Peterson keeps it, fights his way near the five-yard line, but the Bulls are right there to answer. Roy Manns, Anthony Henry. Yeah, big Joey Camaro had a hold of him by the pads and was trying to hang on, and that's Jay Mize now. Looks like he's got a hand injury of some kind. Jay Mize has played a lot in this game as a weak side linebacker, and he's made some plays for him. He's done well. And with that, one, with that run, Adrian Peterson has now set the record for most yards rushing in a season for a freshman. And he's beaten some pretty big names, Doug Graver. <laughs> yeah, I would say some big names. Uh, you know, Tony Dorsett, I mean, all the great backs that have played just passed up Ron Dane by a couple yards. Uh, Ron Dane, his freshman year at Wisconsin, just ran wild. This guy has certainly run wild this year. Second down from the six. 
Rolling out left side. Hill near the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Well, that was sprint out run all the way. We did, we've seen that now three times in the second half. And, of course, that's a 4-4-40 out there. And uh, they're lined up in what we call the mother goose for the extra point. Let's see if they run the mother goose or if they shift and kick it. No, nope, they're going to shift over and kick it. Chambers will attempt the point after. He's been two for two today. 55 of 58 on the season. Make it 56 of 59. 21-17, Georgia Southern has come back to regain the lead. Now the South Florida offense has got to answer the bell. They have to. This is a crucial juncture here. One more look at the touchdown Emmanuel run by County Hill. Emmanuel County front group, your buses will be outside gates five and Well, oh, that's a good individual and effort, and that's good blocking downfield. You know, and, and even though he's not a very big young guy, he's about 170 pounds, but he, he benches 300 pounds, Al. He, he's very, very strong, and you combine that with a 4-4-40, makes very intelligent decisions in the option. Uh, he's really starting to become a leader for this football. He's a very quiet young man, but he really this year has accepted the leadership role as I talked to Paul Johnson yesterday. 85 yards, three minutes, 31 seconds, 10 plays for the touchdown. Greg Hill, the six yard run. His first touchdown today, and Georgia Southern has regained the lead at 21-17. On the other side, you have Jim Levitt talking to his defense. Overall, he has to be very happy with the play of his defense, especially when you consider Georgia Southern coming in, averaging more than 44 points and nearly 400, actually nearly 500, 500 yards. Yeah, 499 a game. That's an average. I mean, that is amazing. Uh, they really have not been tested all year. Uh, Appalachian State probably played them the best. That was 37-24. They won that one. That's the only close game they've had up to this one. This is a short kick. Clemens at the six-yard line. Gets a block, gets it over the 20, but he's buried by Benny Cunningham at the 21. And Chad Barnhart is coming back on the field for the South Florida offense. Wow, that surprises me. Uh, he really has not been able to practice this week. Every time he's tried to throw a long ball, just like what happened in this game, uh, he's kind of uh, dinged that shoulder again, but it's good to see him back. I, I, I think that uh, Georgia Southern, uh, I think the reason they've done so much blitzing in this game is they know the physical condition of the South Florida quarterback because they're, they're not a blitzing team at all. But they've done a lot today, and they're lined up in a blitz formation again. First down from the 22. LaFayne Williams gets away from one man, and he has some room at the 40. Rumbles his way to the 43-yard line. South Florida has come up with some big plays throughout the day against this number one team in the country. Well, that was big Brian Wilson, 93, that missed the play in the backfield, and that was a stunt. And uh, the South Florida Bull offensive line did not pick up the stunt, but LaFayne was able to make a miss and turn it into a big play. 2.35 left to go in the third period. Georgia Southern back with the lead at 21-17. Williams again. Look at those feet. Up to midfield. Arky Thompson, the tackle for Georgia Southern. What South Florida has forced Georgia Southern to do with this, uh, what I call ace formation, balance, two tight ends, two wide receivers. Uh, Georgia Southern now has gone to straight man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, which they haven't done much of this year, but they're doing it to get their safety run force against the two tight end set. Second down and two, a gain of eight on the play. There's Williams, 49 yards, averaging more than five yards a carry. Williams again. He's hit immediately. Benji Harris on the stop for Georgia Southern. 
By the way, interestingly enough, the defensive coordinator at Georgia Southern is a guy by the name of Rusty Russell, who happens to be the son of the legendary Irk Russell. And uh, Rusty Russell's a coaching veteran. He's coached at Pitt. He's coached in the Canadian Football League, Memphis, Vanderbilt. He played at Georgia. Uh, so I, he's ha I talked to him yesterday as well. He's really happy to be home in uh, Statesboro, Georgia. This is home. How about this for a big third down play? Third down and three, just over midfield for the Bulls. Williams and Dixon in the backfield for South Florida. Dixon, the dump truck, appears to have the first down. Going to be close. Boy, a helmet came flying out of that pile. Uh, there has been some uh, violent collisions on this field today by both football teams. A really physical, physical, hard-nosed game. Let's take a look at it here. That's simply the uh, inside zone play. And that was uh, Dixon's helmet that came flying out of the pile. I think we're going to get a measurement here. And, uh, you know, and, uh, Jim Levitt has rolled the dice a little bit this year, Al. You think maybe if they're short, he does it again? He has rolled the dice throughout his career at the University of South Florida. He ain't bashful about going for it on fourth down. I think he's got it anyway. It's going to be close. There is the first down. All right. Boy, what a game. Keep it on the helmet here from Dixon. Uh, I believe that's a face mask right there. I think that's a major <laughs> face Normally mask. Normally when a guy grabs a face mask and pulls the helmet off, you would say that has a chance to be called as a face mask penalty. That was in a pile, though. The offense of the officials, you certainly can't see everything. It's head down in a pile. That's stuck spot. Ball mark at the 46. The Bulls are on the move. They trail by three. 33 seconds left to go in the third period. Williams, the spin. That's a mistake. Yep. And he is buried out of bounds. Daryl Morrill, the tackle for the Eagles. Uh, Morrell runs a 4-4-40, and uh, as fast as the feint is, he cannot outrun that young guy to the sideline. That's a bad mistake uh, right there by Lafayne. Now you're looking at a second and 14. And uh, when you got, you know, when you have negative, uh, in their game plan where they're just trying to chip away, chip away, and control the ball, now when you go to second and 14, it really puts them in a hole. Especially with the condition of the right arm of Chad Barnhart. Very tender throwing shoulder. Will he put it in the air right here? Jackson in motion. Quick pass. Hippolytes at the 42. Knocked out of bounds by Archie Thompson. So he's able to get half of it back. I'll tell you what, the offensive line and the running backs have done a great job of protecting Chad Barnhart today. They know he's hurt. Uh, Georgia Southern knows he's hurt. Uh, I have, I've looked at a lot of film on this team, Al. I've never seen them blitz like this. I mean, they're blitzing at least half the time, and uh, no question they're doing it to get to Barnhart. I and mean, that, they, they know what's going on there. And that is the end of the third period. What a ball game so far here in Statesboro. They're holding up four fingers. Don't go away. We have a wild fourth quarter and maybe more coming up live from Statesboro right after this. The water tower here in Statesboro, Georgia Southern outside Paulson Stadium. And believe me, the South Florida Bulls would love to throw a wet blanket over a good crowd here at Paulson Stadium. And undefeated Georgia Southern. Third down and seven from the 43. A huge play for the Bulls. They trail 21-17 just underway here in the fourth quarter. Barnhart with a very tender shoulder. And he'll keep it oh. and slips. He may have had the first down if he keeps his feet. Uh, he certainly had a chance to have it. Again, that scramble, in my opinion, is a direct result of him not having confidence in his ability to throw the ball down the field. No question about it. Here's the replay that uh, Georgia Southern's in a double zone, which they haven't shown much of this year. Here's the scramble, and I'll tell you what, if he can keep his feet right here, uh, I think he's going to get the first down. Boy, that hurts. Martin Hart showing a lot of guts today. Oh, he's a tough kid. Joyner standing at his 10. Umholtz has been a key in this game with his ability to pin back 
the number one team in the country, and it appears he might have done it again. Although this one is deep in the end zone, but still a beautiful high punt for Umholtz. And Georgia Southern will get the football for the first time here in the fourth quarter with a four-point lead at the 20-yard line. The Tampa Tribune. It's good to know. To subscribe, call 813-TRIBUNE. The South Florida Bulls are fighting for a playoff spot here against the number one team in the country. What about Georgia Southern? What are the Eagles fighting for? They're in the playoffs. They won the Southern Conference. Look at this. An undefeated regular season. This will be the third time in the 90s after doing it five times in the 80s. From the 20-yard line, first and 10. Georgia Southern with the 21-17 lead. Just underway here in the final period. Hill. Over the 30 and a first down. Well, I tell you, he is really something. Uh, you know, he, he, he audibles. Just put yourself in this situation. About 80% of the snaps, he has to make an audible at the line of scrimmage to the whole football team. And then make all the correct decisions. And then you throw that in with his quickness and strength right here. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, he, he is uh, he's one of the best option quarterbacks I have ever seen play this game. Steve Dill down on the field, the starting left guard for Georgia Southern. Injuries on both sides today. Steve Dill, a young guy from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. There's 12 uh, Floridians on this roster, and of course the two uh, that make the biggest impact are, of course, uh, Mr. Hill and Mr. Peterson in that backfield. Yeah, you know, Al, it's interesting. This was originally scheduled, this whole series between USF and Georgia Southern. It was a two-game series with an option for two more. <laughs> now, Paul Johnson is not foolish, the Georgia Southern coach. They pulled out that, to that option. He says, shoot, are you kidding me? I'm not going to be crazy. I'm not going to play these guys anymore after this. He can see how good this program is going to be and how fast they're coming. So next year, they're going to play Oregon State, and then the year after that, they play University of Georgia. And they will be competitive against both those teams. In fact, I think they'll beat Oregon State. First down from the 32. Look out. Fumble. Now they're saying the ground caused the fumble. Peterson on the carry. You know, uh, Adrian Peterson here was really tripped up by his own lineman who was down on the ground because if he, if, I mean, he's got a huge gas in the South Florida defense if he doesn't trip over his own guy. Take a look at it right here. That's the beer. See the chop block on Butler? And he, and he, he trips over the guard through the chop block. Fumble. On the snap, Hill is able to cover it. Georgia Southern on the recovery. Here, I've just been bragging on Greg Hill. He makes his first <laughs> real mistake of the game. And uh, now this sets up a third and about four. This is an opportunity for the Bulls to get there, uh, get the defense off the field. Third quarter, Citadel 29, VMI 10. Third quarter, Florida 33. The South Florida defense has truly frustrated this offense from Georgia Southern. Again, Georgia Southern came in averaging nearly 500 yards of offense per game. Adrian Peterson came in averaging 181 yards per game. He's not even at the century mark yet. Third down and three. Hill keeps it. The pitch. Excellent tackle by the Bulls and Mike Sandy. But not before, it appears. Yeah, I think they're going to measure. It's close, but I agree with you. I think he has the uh, first down. Audrell Grace on the carry for Georgia Southern. Audrell Grace is one of the few young guys that plays. I mean, uh, I talked to, had a long talk with Coach Johnson yesterday up here. Uh, that They're redshirting a bunch of great young players. He really thinks this, their football team is going to be better next year than this year by quite a bit. That's scary. And, uh, you know, and I think they're, in my opinion, they're certainly the odds-on favorite to win the national championship this year. Uh, you know, key thing is, of course, uh, Hill and Peterson, uh, they have to stay healthy because they don't have the depth of a lot of teams. And they have just enough for the first down. Well, they, you know, they have a great crowd here, don't they? I mean, they really get into their football. This is a loud, loud stadium to play in. It sits down on a bowl right here. 
you get 20,000 folks in here, and uh, they get it cranking pretty good. And this is really the first time all season they've seen their football team challenged in any way, shape, or form. The Eagles 143 yards in the first half. They've gotten it going here in the second. Yeah. And Peterson has some room, and he's ready to rumble. Inside the 30 to the 26. Anthony Henry with a touchdown saving tackle for the Bulls. Yeah, and that's the Adrian Peterson that these fans are used to seeing, and they're just simply wearing them down. They, the defense has been on the field almost the whole second half. And take a look at Peterson here. He is so strong. Good balance, but look at the look at the strength in those legs. He benches all at 350 pounds. He he is a he's he's a man. At the 28. Freeman to the 20. Freeman on the carry. And now, of course, they come back in a stunt in a slanting defense and take away the fullback, force the ball to get pitched outside. The safety's got to make the play. Anthony Henry missed the tackle. He was right at the line of scrimmage, had a chance to make a great play. That'll set up second down and three. And, uh, you know, this is, I hate to say this, but this is shades a little bit of Western Kentucky, Al, when in the uh, fourth quarter in particular, Western Kentucky just wore him down. Peterson again. Again, you got a young football team here on the road in a tough situation. The quarterback is hurt, and uh, they just got to keep battling. They've got to play four quarters of football and keep battling. Jason Butler, of all the guys that uh, they missed, when, when Jason Butler went out for South Florida in that Western Kentucky game, he's been tough to replace. There you see uh, Sean Hay. He's had a great game. There's Jason Butler. Uh, they really need him in there for his leadership as much as anything else. Uh, Brian Wilson has played very, very well today at the other linebacker spot. Uh, Vasse Mark, I think, has done a good job playing defensive end, a position he's not used to. From the 16, first down. Hill keeps it. Can he turn the corner? Very close to the five yard line and still some heavy duty hitting out there. Boy, and uh, Greg Hill came down, faked the pitch, and darted up inside. Uh, boy, is he quick. He is really, really, really quick. Any option team in the Air Force would love to have him. Army would. Uh, he's really something. Once again, he had 219 yards rushing last week, 143 yards passing, and a touchdown in the victory over Furman. And the Bulls know him all too well. He had a 77-yard touchdown run at Houlihan Stadium a year ago. First and goal from the six. Peterson stumbles forward, gets it down to the two. You know, Greg Allen in the high school led the Sarasota Riverview to a 13-1 record uh, his senior year, fifth in the nation, in fact. So this is nothing new for him. He's had a lot of success running the option. Peterson has now set a Southern Conference rushing record Georgia More than 1,900 yards. In today's game. Greg Hill on the carry. Very little room for Greg Hill. On the tackle. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a quarterback follow play, which we really haven't seen much of today. And, uh, you know, I, I'm amazed at this offense, and I'll be honest with you, I'm a fan of this offense. I think that uh, if this, if Paul Johnson ever does leave here to go to a major big-time uh, program, now here's the follow. Good job, good pursuit. Vasse, Mark, Williams. Hill from the three. Touchdown, Georgia touchdown, Southern. Grant Hill. Three-yard touchdown run for Georgia Southern. Run. He's really something special. He really is. And, uh, you know, he told me in high school he made one visit. He came here. This was his first visit. And uh, he left here. He committed to him. He said, this is where I want to go. 
He's a quiet guy. He really fits in very, very well here. But uh, Jim Levin and his staff, they've done a great job in preparation. And uh, it's just a little bit too much Georgia Southern for him right now. Chambers to attempt the point after. And it's an 11 point lead for the number one team in the country, hoping to remain undefeated. Greg Hill with the second touchdown run today. And the junior from Sarasota Riverview is putting a knife to the heart of the South Florida Bulls. Greg Hill with his second touchdown in his second half. And Georgia Southern takes the 11 point lead. Now can this team, the South Florida Bulls, Defense, very tired. Cannot afford to go right back out there on the field. They need a drive and they need some points from Chad Barnhart and the South Florida Bulls. Five minutes, 19, sevens on, uh, 19 seconds on that scoring drive. 80 yards. Hill, his second touchdown, a three-yard run. And it's a 28-17 advantage for the number one team in the country. Chambers to kick off. And it goes out of bounds. The Bulls will get excellent field position at the 35. Well, that's a good start. And what really needs to happen now is the Bulls need a long drive. on all, that. That's the recipe to beat this team. You have to answer all the long drives with long drives of your own. And uh, you have to keep your defense off. It takes a lot more energy to play defense than it does offense. And right now, the South Florida defense is just dead. You can just see it. Their legs are gone. And it's a huge difference from the first half. Now the question, anything left in the right arm of Chad Barnhart? He's 7 of 8, 82 yards, but he really doesn't have any zip on the football. No, he can't throw it down the field, and here comes the blitzes, boy. They're like a bunch of sharks. They're really going after him. Dixon able to beat the line of scrimmage, and he's on the run at the 40. The 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 11-yard line. The Bulls beat the Blitz in a big way. Well, they certainly did. And if uh, if our key Thompson uh, doesn't have great speed, that's a touchdown. That's a good job of him running down. But you're exactly right. They caught him in the Blitz. They blocked it very well. And that's it. He's off to the races. Full Blitz. Look at Morrell from the backside. And that's not even, oh, that's a great job of picking up the blitz. And Thompson is the guy that missed the tackle at the line of scrimmage. He gets up off his feet and, no, it's not our key Thompson. I'm sorry, I blew that call. That's number four. That's uh, Moreland, the corner. They're marking the ball at the 10-yard line. Some confusion on the field right now. Now, the disappointing thing for the South Florida Bulls from here, it is now first and goal from the 10. They're going to have to go all 10 yards to get a touchdown. No opportunity for a first down. Right. Yeah, you just got to pound it at these guys. And, and again, if they do blitz, you've got to be able to pick it up just like they did. And uh, Barnhart can make the short throw. So let's see what develops here. Dixon, 79 yards. Most on that long run just moments ago that have has put South Florida back into this ball game, down by 11, 8.24 and counting. Dixon again fights his way to the five-yard line. Yeah, good body lead, tough, hard nose, the inside runner by Dwayne Dixon and uh, the Bulls have got some fight left in them now. They're coming at them pretty good right here on this series. You know, if they are able to score here, you're looking at 28-24 with about six minutes to go. Good job cutting back against the green. And if now, you, you know, the Georgia Southern guys look a little tired to me. If you do score here, do you go for two points? Another thing to consider. Dixon a third time, brought down at the two. Yeah, that's certainly a decision that uh, the, the two-point decision is one that Coach Levitt's going to make. I bet that he does. And, of course, as you remember, in the great game they had down in Tampa last year, of course, uh, South Florida went for two at the very end of the game to, have an to, to win the game, really. Third down. 
from the two. Are you in two down territory right here? Oh, absolutely. You got. You cannot uh, even think about taking a field goal right here. Dixon and McMillan in the backfield. Dixon again. Very close to the goal line. The Bulls want a touchdown. Uh, you know, they may be able to get a first down here. Let's see where this... That's close. Nope, they got to get to the goal line for the first down. Okay. The 55-yard run, the longest this season against this number one team in the country. And the Bulls call a timeout. 6.31 left to go in the contest. Down by 11. Boncellis Allen back in the game after leaving with the arm injury earlier on. 6.31 left to go in the game. What an exciting one here for Jim Levin and company. The Bulls trail by 11, but they're knocking at the door. The South Florida Bulls are three of five on the season on fourth down. And what a crucial, crucial opportunity here. Fourth and inches to a touchdown. They trail Georgia Southern, the number one team in the country, undefeated, 28-17. And they have both the big backs are in the game. Uh, Dyro McMillan is in there. Dix is in, is in the game. Here comes Chad uh, Barnhart in with the play. So that all uh, it, that tells you to me they're going to hammer something inside here. Inches away from what could be a playoff berth. Anderson in motion. Dixon, touchdown, South Florida. Good call, good call. They got them on their heels. The offensive line uh, for South Florida is really taking uh, control. A lot of confidence in them there. Now they have to go for two. Uh, be really interesting to see what Coach uh, Canales uh, comes up with with their two-point play here this week. Uh, last year, as we call, uh, they had a trick play where they threw the ball back to Barnhart in that exciting game last year at the old Tampa Stadium. Let's see what they come up with this time. Uh, you know, hey, they get two. Now, you, you know, you bring up the question now, if they do get two here, or regardless of what happens here, do they onside kick? That'd be the next thing that comes up. First things first. 6.27 left to go in the contest. Bulls trail by five. They're going for the two-point conversion. Anderson in motion. Barnhart lays it out there for the tight end, but he cannot hold on. He had Wes Marshall open, and again, Barnhart goes down hard on his right shoulder, and he had very little on that throw. Uh, he just can't put any steam on the ball at all. And let's give Georgia Southern credit. That's a great job by Andre Rogers of uh, really stripping the ball and knocking out of Marshall's hands. And Barnhart is really hurting over there on the sideline. He was pummeled to the ground. Yeah, he, he just can't put anything on it. Well, that's a, that's a good job by Rogers, though, too. That's a shame. I, I really think that with a healthy Barnhart, but, and they still might win this game, but with a healthy Barnhart, I think that uh, their chances go up huge because Georgia Southern has blitzed and blitzed and played men, and, uh, you know, they know now he can't throw the ball down the field. They're, re they're really coming after him. But on the other hand, that's hurt him because they've gashed him with the running game. Every time they blitz, they pop one, and the safeties aren't there to make the play, and you got a big play. One more look at the touchdown for the South Florida Bulls that has cut this margin to five. Now, I know that Jim has talked about possible onside kick here. Uh, Georgia Southern is not even looking like it's a possibility. Uh, this will be interesting. Do they kick it away? We'll see. And they go deep. Well, that, what a kick. Deep in the end zone. And Georgia Southern will get the ball to the 20-yard line. So can their South Florida defense, the defense that has played well throughout but has had trouble late in the third period and the fourth quarter today, can they put a stop to Greg Hill and company? Kicking it deep is a vote of confidence for the defense. I think we can stop them. 6.20 left to go in the contest. 28-23. A five-point deficit right now. Five points separating South Florida from what could be a playoff first from upsetting the number one team in the country, a team undefeated. Whistles. 
And I think that's an illegal uh, movement by Georgia Southern. I think you're looking at first and 15. Something was unsettled there at the snap. Well, the officials are huddling. Let's see what they come up with. Wish we had the bike on them today, but we're, they don't have that capability here at this at uh, Paulson Stadium. 28-23, 6 Boy, what a football game. Regardless of the outcome, uh, South Florida has played like crazy here today. From the 20. Hill, look at those quick feet. So dangerous. Sean Hay coming in from the backside to bury him. Excellent effort by Sean Hayes. Just stayed after it. Just stayed after it again. Uh, George Southerns are confused. They've had a lot of confusion in their option responsibilities. They credit the defensive game plan of South Florida. By the way, Glenn Gantz warming up on the sideline. We may not see Chad Barnhart for the rest of the day. Second down and 10. 536 left to go in the contest. What a play by Vasse Mark! Well, I tell you, the defense has come out smoking. Whatever Coach Levin did on the sideline, he sure got him going here. Vasse Mark has made some plays today, playing defensive end, which he's never done before. You're going to see a stun inside, and Vasse lets the dive go. Takes the, That's a misread on the part of uh, Georgia Southern. Boy, this is exciting stuff right here now. We told you not to go away. Third down and 15. Less than five minutes remaining. A good crowd from Tampa coming to see this one. A lot of Bulls fans here. Third down to the air. Greg Hill with time. And he finds Joyner very close to a first down. That's the difference in Greg Hill and most option quarterbacks. He can flat throw the football. And that's the run and shoot. Miles Davis passing game, the five-step quick curl. And boy, he put it in there, didn't he? That's a, that's a terrific play by that young guy. He threw a dart to Joyner. Whoa. He needed 15 yards. He got 16. Watch this throw. Sets his feet, moves his feet. Wham. On oh, the that's money. A, that's a great throw, and he barely got the first down. 420 and counting. Hill really milking the clock from the 31. Peterson spinning, fighting his way over the 35. Demetrius Woods, the tackle for South Florida. You know, and, and the fans might question on third and long, why didn't you play man or why didn't you uh, run some kind of blitz? But you cannot afford to do it because, you know, you can see the option at any time. That can, you know, you can hit your head on the goalpost if you don't uh, play that properly. So it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. But right now, right now, that third down conversion is the biggest play of the game. The clock becoming the biggest enemy right now for South Florida. They trail by five. Second down from the 38. Peterson trips up, stops short of the 40. Jason Butler, the tackle for the Bulls. Yep, Jason and the Vasse Mark again. Those two kids have really played a terrific football game. Here it is, another third down, Al. Third and a very short two. Three minutes remaining. Huge, huge play. There have been so many big plays in this game, and here we got another one. That's the split six defense right there. That's helped him in this game. Peterson, oh. second effort, able to get the first down. He is so strong. Now, they had him. I mean, they had him. Great uh, leg strength and drive, Good upper body Georgia strength. Wow. Oh. 
the young guy from Santa Fe High School, Alachua, Florida, Alachua, Florida. Brother plays at the uh, University of Florida, wanted to go to Florida. They couldn't take him quite at the end, but uh, I'm sure that he's happy he's at Georgia Southern now. The Bulls only have one timeout remaining. 2.15 left to go in the contest. Bulls trail by five. Peterson again. Barrels his way over the 45 to the 47, maybe the 48. Now he's the man, isn't he? Uh, you know, and he's now he's uh, got to be approaching 2,000 yards for the season. And, uh, you know, with uh, probably at least three or four more games, uh, let's be honest, I mean, this team is probably going to go to the championship game, I would guess. You're looking at, you might have 2,600 yards in one year. We're under two minutes. The Bulls desperate for a turnover here. Peterson again to midfield. 125 left to go. Another third down. And the Bulls called timeout. That's a good move. I thought, honestly, I thought they might have should have called one at about the two minute mark. One minute, 19 seconds. Georgia Southern, the 28-23 lead. There are your two head coaches. Both are finalists for Coach of the Year honors in Division I AA. Jim well, Levitt on the left, Paul Johnson on the right. Two hot young properties right there. They both have coached their heart out this week. And uh, yeah, Jim Levitt, he's already turned down some good jobs. I know that professional football to stay here. Paul Johnson has turned down some Division I head jobs already. Uh, both, both coaches really like where they're at. They like their programs. And it's going to take something good to get either one to move. By the way, next Saturday night, the Bulls take the field again. This time, they collide with Moorhead State. Be sure to tune in at 7 o'clock for all the action. USF football all season long on Sports Channel. Well, this is really the ball game here. If, if they can convert this first down, third down and three, fourth and the then, uh, you know, uh, it's over. Then there's no way South Florida can stop the clock. 119 remaining. Bulls trail 28-23. They were down by 11 early in the fourth, but Otis Dixon goes on a 55-yard run to set up a one-yard run to get the Bulls back in it. Third down and two and a half, call it. Hill on the keeper. And he's got the first down and the ball game for Georgia Southern. Uh, 105 remaining, and there's really no way the Bulls can stop the clock. Well, on that particular play, Anthony Williams came flying from the backside and tried to strip the football from Hill, but he's so sound fundamentally. Uh, you know, hey, this team is very, very well coached. Both teams are very, very well coached football teams. Georgia Southern will end the season 11-0. And they will simply drop to their knees and not take any chances. You know, an undefeated season, uh, it just doesn't happen very often. There's only been 20 undefeated seasons uh, on any level in the last 10 years. Something special. But let's not forget this effort by Jim Levitt. You can, you can see, not happy, yet his team came out here and fought with the number one team in the country in a big way. They have nothing to be ashamed of today, I'll tell you. Uh, in, in my mind, this is the best game of the year for South Florida. I really believe that. A dejected group of South Florida Bulls walking off the team, walking off the field. Jim Levitt, disappointed but very proud of the way his team fought against Paul Johnson and company as Georgia Southern ends the season undefeated, 28-23, number one Georgia Southern over number 16, South Florida. It's a heck of an effort, boy. I tell you, they should be proud of so Jason Butler, he played his heart out. Heck of an effort. We'll have more from Statesboro right after this.
where Georgia Southern, number one in the country, wraps up a perfect season, 11-0. Very, very happy with the effort today. Of course, the same has to be said for the South Florida Bulls. They are now 7-3, and three, but believe me, they gave this number one team in the country everything it could ever want. Well, they certainly did. And I think it just shows where this program is at. So they had the one stretch in the season after the defeat at Western. That was really the key game. Otherwise, South Florida's headed to the playoffs, no question in my mind. And especially uh, because Georgia Southern is clearly the number one team in 1AA football. And in my opinion, they beat about at least half of the Division I teams. This is a fine program. Playing up here, that's a great job by USF. USF falls to 7-3 and three again. Georgia Southern goes to 11-0. Thanks for joining us here at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. Catch more South Florida Bulls football on Sports Channel next Saturday.